What is up guys? I am the High Tech Redneck and this is the Donner Wave Nano Delay Pedal or as Donner calls it, the Wave Classic Natural Echo Box for Guitarists. Okay, so I really like this pedal. Let's get right into the review for this one. For the features, we have a standard jewelry box style cardboard box. This box comes in. It is... Uh, padded with a foam insert. It is roughly the same size as a boss pedal. Actually a little smaller than a boss pedal, which is awesome. <clears throat> tiny little box. Perfectly good, perfectly useful, and even tinier manual. Very tiny thing. Practically useless, but whatever. Nobody reads the manual. Um, it is a true bypass pedal. It is a legit true bypass pedal. It is a uh, standard 9 volt adapter, just like a boss pedal, which we will talk about very soon. It has little rubber strips on the feet, just like a boss pedal does. Well, not just like it. These are just strips, not a full pad. But they come off easily if you want to Velcro the pedal. Um, it has a very small level feedback and time knobs, as well as a small mode switch. And it has a working current, according to the manual, of 38 milliamps, which makes this the power hog of all the pedals that I have right here. This one uses two or three times more, actually four times more than uh, some of these pedals do. I think this guy uses like eight milliamps. This guy's 32. So yeah, that's still not a big deal. 38 milliamps is not massive at all, not a problem, but it is more than the others. So keep that in mind when you're chaining things up together. Um, the features of this pedal are 10 out of 10. There's nothing more I could ask out of this except maybe a better manual, but once again, nobody cares about the manual. For the construction of the pedal, the Nano series of pedals are made totally different than the Mini series of pedals. The small knobs, the big knobs, the switches, the quarter inch jacks, the foot switch, the power jacks, everything about them is different hardware. Totally different. Don't expect them to be the same. Everything about these Nano pedals is solid except for the power jacks. This this pedal was put together well out of the box. Everything was well fitted. Everything is good quality. Everything is solid except for the power jack. Now, once again, I've spoken to Donner about this problem, and they've told me that they have fixed this problem. They've already found it, fixed it in their new production. But there are warehouses full of these things and other people who have bought a thousand of them, and they're trying to sell them on eBay. And so there is old stock still out there on the market if you're shopping online for sure. So just be wary that if you're buying one of these in the next year or two, you may run into some like this. So uh, I would suggest ordering them directly from Donner to avoid this problem. But the power jack on this older series of pedals is just not as good. They do not allow the adapter to slip backwards out of the plug at all. And if the power jack wiggles a little bit, it naturally slips backwards, which means it's going to lose power and it's going to die. The mini pedals do not have this issue. Boss pedals, other pedals that I've tried do not have this issue. It's only this nano series from Donner that seems to have this problem. Now, I spoke to Donner and they, like I said, they told me they have fixed it. So I would not worry too much if you're ordering from Donner. But once again, I'm not sure. I have an old power all five way daisy chain that I use on these and it worked great. And uh, except on these nano pedals, it did not work great on those. So I ordered a new daisy chain this week and it also does not function well. In fact, it's worse than the original old bulky power all cord was. So uh, yeah, it, it is an issue. It really is. I have not had any problems to be fair while I'm playing my guitar and stomping on this pedal and using it in normal music playing applications. But when I test this, as a reviewer, and I grab the power jack and I jiggle it just a little bit, it does die very easily for me. And also, if I bend down and I move my pedals around and I adjust the power wires while moving them, this pedal is likely to die if I adjust anything very much at all. And I will have to just grab it and reseat the power jack right into the top and it's good to go. But just because I can work with it doesn't mean it's great. That's not ideal. It's not very good. So, uh, yeah, I managed to fix this. I took a piece of sandpaper and I laid it out flat on a table and I scrubbed this pedal like this over the sandpaper. And as you can see, I put a few little love scratches on there and we thinned this jack out on top where it is much thinner here and the plug can actually go deeper. And believe it or not, that fixed the problem on here. 
at least functionally it fixed the problem. It still dies, it still moves backwards, but when I put this on a pedal board and I move pedals around and jiggle things, it does not die nearly as easily or nearly as quickly. So there is a halfway fix for this if you're a DIY kind of person. Scrub it off some sandpaper, throw some nail polish on the scratched up spots, and then you're good to go. It's whatever. So uh, yeah, overall, I give this particular pedal a 6 out of 10 for the construction because the power jack does not give me much confidence about this pedal being roadworthy and that is an issue that can ruin the functionality of a pedal altogether if it is a serious issue. So let's move on to the sound. This, this pedal has a great tone. It's pretty transparent. It has a really great voicing. It has a great analog feel to the delay and it has, a ver it has some very versatile delay options which are an amazing addition to my tone. The normal mode sounds more analog and it has a more rapid decay of the sound, a more linear decay of the sound. It's my preferred setting. The mod mode seems to decay slower at first. It leaves the signal louder and stronger for the initial first couple of repeats and then this, the volume degrades much faster, making it fade very quickly after it is stayed strong for the first few repeats. This makes for a more obvious and pronounced effect that is more percussive and more punchy and it uh, it lasts the same amount of time as the other setting would but it's just more percussive and punchy while it's, it's active. And it also seems to add more punch and it thickens the sound up for sure. It adds more mids for sure. So uh, they're two very usable settings. There's nothing wrong with either one of them. I just prefer one over the other. I say it's a 10 out of 10 for the sound because it does what I like and it gives me more options than what I like that are also very usable. So it's versatile. I'm totally happy with that. So uh, on to the function of the pedal. <clears throat> Firstly, the knobs of this pedal are tiny. I like the short height of the knobs, but I think they need to be wider. They are too skinny and it would allow more control of the sweep um, <clears throat> while you're adjusting them for sure. They don't need to be massively different. They just need to be as as wide as, as you can reasonably make them without them hitting the other components or getting in the way. Secondly, the power jack on the nano pedals that are on the market today obviously mess up the function significantly. It's not a major problem for me, but I cannot recommend it to you because I don't feel like it's a roadworthy design. And once again, sanding the jack down thinner did help significantly, but it's still not ideal. To be fair, if Donner has really fixed this issue, these pedals will be perfectly fine in the future, but I'm not sure about the next year or so because, once again, there are warehouses full of these waiting to be sold. <clears throat> I give the functionality of this pedal a 7 out of 10 because I don't think it's ro roadworthy out of the box. I give it a 10 out of, out of 10 if they fix the power jack. So, in summary, all around this tone, I mean this pedal has a great tone, it's a great pedal as long as the power jack is fixed. I would change the knob size and the power jack and I'd probably also make it a brighter green just because, you know, that's me. Um, it's a great pedal, I highly recommend it to you if you can get one with a fixed power jack. I'm very very happy with the tone of this pedal. I give it an 8 out of 10 overall because I think it's awesome in every way except once again the power jack. And it's a pretty crucial thing but it works, it's just not great. I would recommend this to you for bedroom use or studio use, absolutely, but not necessarily for a touring musician who makes money from live shows. You know, go get yourself something that, that's really, really dependable if you're gonna be doing something like that. But anyway, I hope you guys have found this really useful and awesome and entertaining. I am gonna leave you guys with a tone demo to show you the good and awesome sounds of this pedal in some like testing kind of functions and hopefully some awesome musical functions as well. I am the High Tech Redneck. Don't forget to comment, share, like, subscribe, all that goodness. Later. Let's start with another G chord on this one.
so now let's go through the modes now that you've seen my preferred settings. Uh, generally, I like a longer delay in this time, a medium low feedback and a medium low level. The level and feedback can do all kinds of things on this guy. For instance, let's bring our time down, let's bring our level up, and uh, bring our feedback up just a little more. And now we've got ourselves a, like a slapback kind of thing. Yeah, you've got a really nice kind of slapbacky delay, very versatile and adjustable. That almost sounds like a reverb there, and then we can go into a very long delay. We can bring our levels way up high. That is for the people who like to to really go crazy with the delay. I got a buddy who, who uses it like that and he does great stuff. And of course our feedback knob is the number of repeats. This is the mix obviously of the wet dry signal. That, and this will add more repeats to it. And then we have our normal mode, which, which sounds almost the same, just a slightly different tone. I'm not sure exactly what it does. And now let's hear the exact same settings on the other mode. So yeah, one of them seems like a different sort of decay in the sound. There's also a slightly different tone. I like both of these settings. I find this delay totally usable, totally versatile, and I think it's a totally good addition to my pedal board. And I think it might be a good addition to yours too, if you're in the market for one of these. So there you go. I'm gonna leave you guys with some music that I made with this thing, or music-ish demo kind of stuff. I am the high-tech redneck. Later.